Rob, let me start with this one. Did you think that this would end the way it is in what looks like another messy divorce? Uh, the longer this went on, Chris, I did, especially when uh, we, we talked to Brian Gutekunst at the Combine, and you know it went from in December, we want him back, to January, well, we'll see, to February, Jordan Love's absolutely ready, and then you throw in Mark Murphy's comments last week, and, and yes, I, I think that it was pretty clear that this is where we were headed. I also think that it was pretty clear going into today that it wasn't going to be completely resolved. We at least now know on the record what Aaron Rodgers wants. There's still an awful lot to work out. All right, and they were talking about compensation. And the other thing that Aaron talked about, too, so while you're talking about the Packers and maybe they're changing tone publicly, certainly privately, it was probably a lot different, he claimed – going into the darkness, wasn't aware of that, and came out 90%, you know, retired, that he was ready to retire. Do you believe that? Chris, there's always three sides of this, right? <laughs> his, his side, their side, and the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how the Packers handle this from a public response. At this point right now, um, they, they have, there is no response, and I, I was told there probably wouldn't be uh, until something's done. Other than I was told, look, we're going to we're fine trading them, but there are still some things that we have to work out. Negotiations are ongoing. And to me, the timeline of this really didn't get accelerated today. Uh, like we're not you know, I don't know that we're any closer today. Could you make an argument, we Rob, that it actually sl is slowing down the timeline now? Everybody sure. knows yeah. where everybody wants to be, but there's no rush to get this right. done. No question. And, and think about this. You know, we, we've spent so much time talking about the contract. Well, the biggest thing that would help the Packers is if they didn't trade them until after June 1st. So if they're sitting there on June 2nd, uh, the salary cap hit goes from, what, I think $40 million to $15 million. And the other thing to point out is that that $58.3 million option bonus is an option only in when they pay it. They have the option to pay that anytime starting free agency today or before the season opener. So they can wait and wait and wait, and Rodgers doesn't get that money until September. Well, okay, great. So this could go on for a while if it hasn't happened. So there is something here that I think there people need to remember that this isn't the Packers going, the guy can't play, he's no good. Is it, isn't this as much about a salary cap and franchise reset from a financial viability standpoint in terms of being able to operate as a football team? I think it's all of that, Chris, plus the fact that they went eight and nine last year and not saying that that was Aaron Rodgers' fault. Uh, there were certainly plenty of deficiencies on the team, but the point being is, you know, it, it was, we're okay paying a guy $40 million when we're going 13 and three, 13 and four, 13 and four. But the minute it goes to eight and nine and there are other issues, I don't want to call them distractions because I think that's uh, a disservice to Rodgers. Uh, but there are other issues that come up that maybe teams are just less willing to live with after you're eight and nine rather than winning 13 games. All right. But thinking long term, when you when I'm talking about this salary cap reset and everything. So what would your word of advice be to fans who are going to want to compare the Jets and the Packers every step of the way in 2023? Uh, my advice would be if you're a Packers fan is to look back at 2008 and realize that, yeah, Aaron Rodgers played really well his first year, uh, but they went 6-10. and 10. And, yes, the second year, the Packers started 4-4 four and four when Favre was with the Jets and the Jets, I'm sorry, with the Vikings. Uh, and the Vikings went all the way to the championship game right that year. Yep. But in the end, they suffered through, you know, Packers still made the playoffs in 2009. They had to suffer through a little bit of heartache to get to where they needed to be. Now, not saying that Jordan Love is a guarantee. There's obviously no guarantee and chances are he's probably not going to continue this just because it's so unlikely. But at some point, you have to rip the Band-Aid off, right. and it's going to hurt for a little while, but in the end, it will heal. All right, Rob, very sage advice there. So you have covered Aaron, like I have, his entire career here in Green Bay. What will you remember most, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> other, other than him calling me Bob? I mean, look, Chris, there's so many things. I mean, you know. Obviously, the Super Bowl, you know, was incredible. I mean, the, the Hail Mary that he threw in Detroit. I mean, so many, so many moments. But I think, and, and you know, remember when Mark Murphy a couple of years ago 
said that, you know, Ted Thompson once called Aaron a complicated fella. Yeah. That's probably the right way to put it. He, he's a complicated fella. He's, he's whether that you think that's good or bad, that's the way it is. Complicated, gifted, supremely talented, and now on his way to being a New York Jet. Rob, thanks so much.